the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hi everyone, welcome to the Christmas edition of your box seat. Yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors, Michael Guerin. Merry Christmas, my friend. Yeah, same to you too, brother. Big hi to everybody watching around New Zealand and those further afield. We appreciate all our viewers from over in Australia or even in other parts of the world. Um, interesting weekend, wasn't it, Gregory? Group 1 racing at both Invercargill and in the north, which is the first time we've had that. Uh, a lot of news has come out since we had the weekend of racing, including a couple of big, almost certain retirements. And, bizarrely, after all that happened, we are still right back where we were in the Premiership race, Gregory. So that's going to go down to the wire over the next 10 days. Yeah, looking forward to talking about that, Michael. Also, later in the program, we'll do some preview around likes of Ashburton, uh, Addington on Friday. Got a couple of meetings uh, on Saturday, including the Cambridge traditional Christmas Eve meeting. And uh, I've been around the grounds and got you some Christmas crackers, so you'll be able to back a few winners over the holiday period. But let's start with Alexandra Park. Go to last Friday night. Here it was, the 26th running of the Rosslands Queen of Hearts at Group 1 level, Manhattan in front. The eventual winner coming from three back on the fence for James Stormont back in Group 1 winning mode. All-American lover darts through, wins the race and post-race we talk to her co-trainer Steve Telfer. Winners gets home nicely, All-American lover. Well you got your Group 1, you're a bit closer to maybe winning the Premiership but maybe that race didn't quite pan out as you thought it might? No, nothing like I thought it would. Uh, you know, you can tell the drivers everything, but it changes after a couple hundred metres, doesn't it, Mix sometimes? But, um, yeah, look, they, um, the drivers adapted well and, and drove the race well. James drove a nice race, quiet race, and used her speed. And Darley may end up having a good trip, but I just probably didn't think she finished it off as well as she could, make. I'm not sure if you've spoken to both the drivers, but James said Tim actually pushed him down and put him on the fence, which won you a Group 1. Yeah, yeah, James will have to thank Tim for that, won't he? That's the worst team driving I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I say, didn't go to schedule, but uh, um, when she did get pushed through the fence, and initially I, I thought, oh, geez, that's no good, but then I realised she was only through the fence, and I thought, well, she, it's not too bad. Yeah. She's always been very fast, and sometimes racing off those big handicaps in the South Island, she's had to be driven tough as well. Um, what does she do now? Does she pop across the Tasman? Did she maybe go to an open class race, Steve? Yeah, yeah, look, I'm going to, um, just going to see how she pulls up. There are, there are a few options for her immediately, but um, with the two mares, I'm going to split them. I'm going to talk to Paul and Mary, and um, um, whichever one um, they like to travel to with Darling Me, I'll probably go to the other one with um, All American Lover. Yeah. Darling Me, that was a little bit mystifying, really. She just didn't seem to be there tonight. No, it was. Yeah, no, she had a little gallop in the score up as well. And, um, yeah, it's not normally normally her, but, um, yeah, she seemed really bright and well during the week, maybe a bit too well. But, um, yeah, Tim said she uh, felt great, went for about 150 metres, and then the handbrake come on. So, uh, yeah, she, um, yeah, we'll have to just uh, check her out in the next couple of days and see if there's anything to miss, Mick. But, um, yeah, that's probably, um, probably her worst one for a wee while. We're doing this Friday night, there's plenty more racing to go for the weekend, but it's already been a massive week. A Group 1, a new partnership announced, and uh, no halt to the growth of Stonewall Stud and what's going to be Telfer Cullen. So must be very exciting for you, Steve, at this junction of your life. Yeah, no, it is. I'm, you know, I'm just uh, grateful for the support that Steve's shown us over the years and um, you know, it's great to repay him with, with this Group 1, but um, yeah, he's been a huge supporter and Jill and um, you know, couldn't have done it without them. But um, yeah, no, it's really exciting what um, what's going to sort of um, how it's going to develop in the next 12 months with the barns and everything, and the people coming on board. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, we're close to getting a driver for the North Island one as well. So um, yeah, that'll probably come out shortly. But um, yeah, no, everything's going well, Mick. The Premiership is one space closer. By the time this goes to air, it, it might have changed a bit again. What's the plan over the next? 
let's make it 10 days by the time this airs to try and give yourself the best chance of winning the premiership. Yeah, look, we're going to um, we're going to start. There's three meetings up here. We're going to have quite a few in each. There's two Cambridge meetings in the last meeting here at Auckland. We'll have runners in there. Um, Ashburton next week. There's probably three or four going, and um, Carl Markham's going to take three or four to Westport as well. So um, yeah, we'll have runners a bit all over the place. Going to the coast. We are. Yeah, I admire that, Steve. Yeah, I'm a coast yeah. man. I, for the last, the Westport Cup have been, I haven't I've never been there, but um, they've always thrown me a hat all the time, and I've promised to get there. And uh, I tried to get there this year, but Jill said we're having Christmas at home, so I can't get there. But uh, um, I will get there. I will get there soon. Yeah, great stuff there with Steve Telfer, and a big thank you to Stonewall Stud and Stables, and and Steve and Amanda and, and Jill and everyone there, Steve Stockman, Michael, because they not only support racing in a massive way, they support the show as well, but. Great to see them get a Group 1 there. A few things to unfold out of that. James Stormont, back in Group 1 winning form, 12th Group 1 in his career, first in, well, a very long time as we spoke to him on Trot's Talk SENZ the other day. He, he's wrapped to be back in that sort of mode. A darling me, obviously a problem, and she didn't race up to that level, but you broke the news that uh, she's finished racing. Yeah, so firstly on Darling Me, retired on Tuesday, was found to have stress fractures very small in the knee, which would explain why she, why she couldn't let down. So she'll go to start and there's nothing left to prove for her. She's a 151 horse out of a door me, uh, just works beautifully for Woodlands. So she is leaving, exiting stage right as they say. And a bit of a shame it wasn't a couple of months earlier that she was retired because of course she could have gone and fold for this season. They may still choose to do that of course. And, they would have a Northern Hemisphere bred time horse. So she is gone, All-American Lover um, still very much around and you could make the case as good a mare as we have in the country, if not the best mare with Stylish Memphis, also shortly to be retired. She'll head to Sydney and then she'll come back and she'll be to the Brumiers paddock, Greg. I think she's in Folder Captain Treacherous. Um, on James, um, really thrilled. I think a lot of people were in Auckland to, to see him get another Group 1. It was 2007 with Susie Maguire, the last time he got a Group 1. So he's always been a very good driver, but these days with the bigger stables monopolising our Group 1s, all-stars, you know, people like Tel Team Telfer, the Duns, um, it's very hard to get on horses who can win these races because even if you can get on one of theirs you're usually on the second or third option which he was on this occasion. I think James is going to slightly change around some of the things in his career and you heard Steve Telfer say there Greg uh, we're still sorting out our North Island driver because obviously Benjamin Butcher uh, is mo or has moved down to Cambridge. I wouldn't be surprised if James does a lot more driving for them and that's going to enormously increase his profile because he's got a good horse and hay bartender. But he might start having two winning chances a week, three winning chances a week at Alexandra Park. I don't know that. It hasn't been confirmed, yep. but I wouldn't be surprised. He's and going the right way about it by winning yeah, a Group 1. <laughs> it doesn't do any harm, does it? A no. And obviously Tim Williams can't just travel up and down the country every weekend. Um, on Tim Williams, uh, Steve Telfer confirmed it to me on Tuesday night. Tim will drive the team on the West Coast next week. So they are sending four or five to Westport, Westport and Reefton, and Tim will drive those, which is a huge advantage. And that premiership we spoke about quite a bit in the interview went up and down all over the weekend. They got three in front, could have been four with BD Joe, but of course he missed away. We'll look at that later on. And now it's back to one, Greg. So very much still advantage Team Telfer because they have a lot more horses racing over the next... 10 days than the All-Stars will have. We'll look at them later on too. But uh, I think they'll win the Premiership, Greg, but it's uh, it's like watching two heavyweight boxers with 16-ounce <laughs> yeah. gloves on just punching each other and nobody is willing to go down. That They really are slogging it out here. At the end of the season, they don't have their number one horsepower floating around. It's, um, it's going to be a slugfest over the next 10 days. I just think... Steve and Amanda will be throwing a lot more punches than Mark and Hayden. 
Yeah, have to agree with that. Manhattan, excellent in second. Another very good performance from her in a rarity, getting run down. Harder than diamonds, good. Stylish Memphis had her chance. Uh, but like you say, she's in foal and she has nothing left to prove. Also with nothing to prove at the moment is copy that. He made it five on the bounce with this outstanding performance again coming from back in the field. You mentioned James Stormont. This is his horse in front, Hay Bar Tender, doing everything he possibly could to hold off the two-time IRT New Zealand Cup champ. But he was once again too strong. And we get to hear from Andrew Drake, someone we don't often see on television, as he talks about what it's like training this superstar. And copy that at his brilliant best over Hay Bartender. Last tango in heaven, they were followed hot and treacherous. Well, mate, you're sitting back in for the boss who's just got out of hospital, Andrew. Um, first things first, copy that. Man, good tonight. Uh, he's a freak, isn't he? No, it's an it's a absolute privilege to be working with a horse like that, and um, no, he's super. I know Ray usually likes to drive the horse himself, and he's been in and out of hospital. We'll get to Ray in a second. Who's been filling in? Yeah, I, I'm too scared to let anyone else touch him. So, <laughs> Are you having a spin? Yeah, otherwise it's on me if something else happens. So no, I've just been making sure that I've been doing him, and then otherwise it's on me if something goes wrong. So no, it's, uh, yeah, it's a massive thrill. Can you tell when he's in the zone? Because there's been times in the last year he hasn't been in the zone. Can you tell? Absolutely, he's in the zone now. <laughs> How can you tell? Uh, no, just the way he acts around home. Um, you know, if you're on the jog track and you buy another one, he does a wee squeal or, you know, he makes makes them know that he's the king of pookie. And, um, yeah, I was a bit worried yesterday. He didn't squeal on the jog track, but once I got in, in the barn, he uh, made sure everyone knew that he was back inside, so... Yeah, he, he knows he's in the zone too. OK, the talk is potentially Ballarat and the Hunter Cup. Is that still the talk around the barn? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah, hey, look, I, I um, move, move rings as well, so I just got to talk to Ray and move. But um, as far as I'm aware, that's, that's his plan, yeah. OK, I heard Ray told me two weeks ago he lost 12 kilos. Um, how could Ray possibly lose 12 kilos? There was nothing to him to start with, so I, I bug it if I know as well. But um, yeah, look, he's out and uh, he's at home, but um, he needs to stay home, I think, and uh, get better, yeah. So just a, a, a Lincoln Farms public health warning. Ray, who'll be watching this, you're not allowed to come to work or do too much and you've got to eat a lot. Please stay home, the horse is going fine. <laughs> Uh, great to get that insight from Andrew Drake. He's a likeable character. Michael, he's obviously doing a very good job with this horse. The horse is doing an amazing job. So Ballarat and the Hunter Cup. I'm thinking Blair Orange might end up driving him in Australia. They've obviously flown him to Auckland now to drive him with Morris uh, locked in with Hot and Treacherous. So I think Blair might get that opportunity over there. Yeah, I think he should too. I mean, obviously he's won two New Zealand Cups on the horse. They've got to get through New Year's Eve. Uh, there's a 2700 metre race with a 30 metre maximum back mark, which he's going to be incredibly hot favourite for. Um, uh, uh, he hasn't been great in Victoria. He did win a race there when beautifully driven by Nathan Jack. But I, I think, why not take Blair? Blair doesn't have a lot of experience driving in Victoria, but he has driven big winners in Queensland. And after what I saw during the Inter-Dominions and what we're going to see later from the Cranbourne Cup, they're not a scary bunch, the Australian Open class horses. It's just a matter of whether he can bring his best form there from here. And that's the entire question, and that's the question when any horse travels across the Tasman. But you have to go. It's huge money. And, of course, the Hunter Cup rolls in four weeks later to the Miracle Mile, and that's a different challenge altogether. Um, Andrew Drake's an impressive young man, Greg. He's somebody who I used to see around the stables all the time. And I'd, you say hello to people, but I didn't really know him. And then when Ray got trapped in Australia last year, Andrew took over the team, did an outstanding job. Everybody I asked about him said, no, he's a proper horseman. So sometimes because of somebody's age, you often think, oh, well, they're just, for want of a better word, the boy who works for the boss. But no, he, he's doing a very, very good job. Um, been very impressed in my dealings with him and when you see copy that going that well I think everybody else is impressed too um, interesting to hear that Ray is at home which is great Ray we're, yep. we're thrilled you out of hospital but 
I'm baffled, Greg. One of the more bizarre things I've heard in the harness racing year is how Ray Green could possibly lose 12 kilos. Yeah. So um, I, I hope he put some of it back on, or, or maybe he can share it around and some other people in harness racing like me and a few other people can lose a couple <laughs> of kilos each and Ray can get his back. But uh, it's a feel-good story. I'm sure he feels better. And yes, Ray, we hope not to see you at the races for a while yet. Have yeah, a couple look after of, yourself. Have a couple of pies and... <laughs> Enjoy Christmas. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, Lot 79, Woodland's offering a full brother at the New Zealand Bloodstock Sales. We'll have a look at some of the uh, offerings from both Brecken's and Renwick Farms a little bit later on in the show. And just back to All American Lover, there's a close relation that Brecken's are offering. Lot 74, a Captain Treacherous filly that will be pretty well sought after. Trotting feature was the Thames Members Trotting Cup. And Artie by the Hill returning to Alexandra Park. This is what he produced when winning in the hands of John Dunn. Brilliant drive it was and Michael Guerin, our intrepid reporter, caught up with John afterwards to have a chat to him about this horse and a few other things happening in the Dunn family's life. Back in his old stomping ground, Artie by the hill and he'll get the win, lovely drive by John Dunn. Second over was Love in the Port, then Springbank Mason, a very game third. Well, John, you've become a trotting stable the last couple of years. Sunday Sun, Matadero's, um, winning derbies, and now this horse, and he's pretty darn good. He is very good. Uh, he got looked after very well as a young horse, massive uh, from from going forward now. So um, it definitely helps, and uh, his manners were to the fore of late. So that's why he's sort of he's getting away quick, getting in a nice spot, and uh, getting the job done. He looks like a horse, John, who you driving him tough like that tonight, eventually he's going to get better and better and we might have a grand circuit horse next year. Yeah, I think he will. I think he's sort of got that, he is getting better and better and uh, he's the sort of horse he only does what he has to. Like even when I, I'd ask him to get the front and a lap out and then out the straight, he, he sort of just doing what he had to, he heard one come and then off he went again. So uh, that's probably a good way to be, especially with the trotter. You've had enormous success, you and your father and Jenna and, and everybody who works with you, over the last two or three years with the Trotters, headlined by Sunday's son. Has anything changed about the way Diamond Racing has trained the Trotters or are you just buying and getting better Trotters? No, we're sort of buying and we've and we're sort of been lucky we get gifted uh, lovely bred Trotters that, that have got ability and breeding to start with. But uh, a big, big key to that is the beach, uh, the straight line training and... Um, They've got to have the ability to start with, but um, definitely get them in the right head space and uh, definitely that's a massive key to our, our stables. Let's talk about Sunday Sun. In the paddock now, are you confident we'll see the best of him again? Yeah, well, maybe not the best of him. He's getting a wee bit older and the other one's getting quicker, So, uh, but I'm very confident he'll come back to probably, hopefully as good anyway and um, not far off. So uh, I'm pleased we sort of, it wasn't a major um, pleased we stopped when we did, so hopefully that uh, steads us to get him back, and especially uh, for the French Shore. OK, is he going to come back up here for the Row Cup if he holds together? Yeah, definitely have another crack, and um, that's, always, that's on the target, so uh, get, through, get through the ones down at Christchurch first, but I'd uh, love to get him back up here. Well, I believe um, there could be an, an addition to the family coming back. We might see, not driving, but we might see... Dexter knocking around Canterbury in the next week or so. That would be, um, must be pretty exciting for the family to see your brother. I presume you haven't seen him for three or four years. Yeah, no, very excited. Everyone's excited to, for him to be coming back. He uh, gets back Wednesday, so um, he's going to, and good on him, he's going to go around all the tracks that, um, and get meet up with the people that looked after him when he was younger. He's trying to go to Omacare and... Do you drive? No, unfortunately he's not, not going to drive, so uh, yeah, that's a shame. But, um, so he's going on a drinking tour? Yeah, yeah, he said it's actually going to be quite good. He's going to be on the other side of the fence for a change, so uh, he's going to enjoy that probably. Uh, mate, it's, um, it's been a wonderful year for Diamond Racing. You won two previous premierships. Um, I suppose you're probably watching the premiership battle with a bit of interest to see the All-Stars and, and a team you've done a bit of driving for on Team Telfer. Yeah, it was a great battle. We were very lucky we won it. So, um, no, it's going to be a good battle and uh, a lot of money's been put into these stocks, so uh, they deserve to be right up there on the premiership table and... Yeah, like I say, it's sort of um, it's going to go down the wire, I reckon. Just talking about your stable and the year you've had, at the back end of the year, in the last couple of weeks, I believe your daughter has taken on a role. She's been up here with the Northern team and helping Grandad. And, look, she's only 15. She's, she's got the father's height. And she, uh, she's been doing a good job helping out to, to look after the Northern team. Yeah, sort of uh, RJ sort of 
put the call out, needed help, but um, Penny and Reese do a great job up here with the team. And but uh, just with I, I sent extra horses up um, just over the Christmas period, so um, needed help and. She was to the forward and, like I say, she's really stepping up and doing a great job. So John Dunn talking about Artie by the Hill. What's that win number eight for him in his career, Michael? Their daughter Lacey coming up to help Grandad Robert. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty funny story there. On New Zealand Cup Day, it was actually Lacey's birthday. And um, she said, Dad always forgets my birthday. And he heard it as, as uh, uh, she heard it rather as he was walking past. And um, he said, yeah, but you are my favourite daughter, she said. I am your only daughter. And he rolls that one out every year, I think. Uh, well, she, look, she's doing a great job. She was, um, she was there the other day, as you said, helping granddad out. And gee, they have an impressive stable now. I mean, when you think they could win trotting derbies and obviously three dominions, but they are factors in all the major pacing races from two-year-old fillies to open class horses. So they're the complete package. They'll finish third on the premiership, but it'll be a very good third. Um, this horse will go a fair way, Greg. I could see him turning up in a row cup and running a place. I'm well, not he's sure already he run could... fourth in a Dominion, of course. Yeah, I'm not, not sure he could win a row cup just yet, but there could be a gap at the top of the open class ranks in yeah. two years, 18 months' time. Um, great to hear Dexter's coming home. Uh, it, it's such a long time since many of us have seen Dexter, and he's the best driver in the world at the moment. Yep. So to have him home will be great. He's not going to be driving, so don't don't get tempted, punters. I know people down there are thinking, oh, this would be good. Um, it would be good to see him have one spin around, Gregory. But, yeah, it would be great to see him home because um, you know, they were a very close-knit family, the Duns, and it's been a long time with COVID and other things that he couldn't come back. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm sure many people in the industry are. It'll be the, the Dexter Summer Tour, Gregory. He'll be making his appearances where he can wave at the Queen at people, the late Queen <laughs> at people. And, and, uh, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to have him home. Yeah, Alexandra Park, we're going to leave that there now. But don't forget the New Year's Eve meeting. Uh, the 31st it is, of course, because that is New Year's Eve, funnily enough. Uh, they have the Group 2 Lincoln Farms Franklin Cup. What else have they got? The Group 3 Majestic Horse Floats Green Lane Cup. They've got the Magnus Benro Mears Classic and the Brecon Farms Juvenile Classic. Uh, they've got live music, heaps of uh, room there for you to bring along the family and celebrate and enjoy uh, an excellent uh, afternoon into the evening of uh, harness racing. So good luck to the team there. Speaking of open class, we need to have a look at the performance in the Group 1 Ascot Park Invercargill Cup. It was by Krug. This is him low flying in front. Michael, self-assured, getting to the outside of Spankham. Uh, when he's in this sort of zone, he's won all his big races in front. Um, he's very, very hard to get past. The three-time derby winner bolts in here, home in 54 and a half seconds, Michael. And, and after the race, Virtually nobody was talking about Krug. They were all talking about young Carter Dalgetty, and look, he, he's really arrived on the scene in the last 18 months, Carter. Very impressive young man, we know that. He, he's got a lot of strings to his bow. He talks well, he acts like somebody should if they want to be at the top of the game. So uh, he got his, his standing ovation from the crowd there in Bacargill. It was a one move win. Once he made the move from the running line to get to the lead, the race was over. I'm not sure self-assured's going as good as he can, Greg. Um, BD Joe missed away at the start, so that was that. There's Mum giving Carter a kiss and Dad's getting involved. Actually quite dressed down for, for Cran on that occasion, Greg. I think Carter was the star of the family for once rather than, than Cran. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a very good horse, we know that. I'm, I'm not sure where he sits. I'm not sure he's probably somewhere between 6 and 10 in the country. Maybe. A win like that gives him another shot at getting a slot for the race by Grins. Just talking about copy that earlier too, by the way, Greg. If you had a slot for the race by Grins, geez, you'd be trying to sign him pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's not signed. I, I don't think there's any signings at the moment. I know there's a couple of really high-profile high organisations trying to get a couple of our big horses. But as best I can work it out, um, copy that's not gone yet. And Krug, who raced in it last year... He's only going to need another one of those type of wins, Greg, because there's not that many open class races in the next six weeks before someone's going to start looking at him as a horse who could be in the race by Grins again. I think the best thing Cran could do, and Chrissy, is stay here and try and get some easy kills, go to an Omicare or go wherever else they want. I don't think he you know, needs to go to Australia and get a few headaches. I think staying here and getting his confidence up could be the best thing for him. 
uh, heading through to maybe that. Well, I spoke to Cran about that this morning, and that's exactly what he said. Uh, very unlikely to go to Australia, stick around here, fifth in the race by Grins last year, has now bumped himself up the pecking order, exactly what you've just said. So that's their plan to try and qualify for that. Looking at the market for the race by Grins, Michael, uh, we have Akuta, BD Joe, copy that, self-assured, all $5.00. About $6 Rock and Roll Do, who we'll see very shortly uh, running third in the Cranbourne Cup. Uh, $8 Old Town Road and then $11 for Majestic Cruiser, who uh, of course finished second in the race behind Self Assured last year. I thought McAndrew Aviator, very, very good, obviously Self Assured second. And Spankham, the other news to come out of the race, uh, a uh, fractured cannon bone. One would imagine that's the end of his career, Michael. He's a rising eight-year-old. He's done absolutely everything. Multiple placings in the New Zealand Cup, Auckland Cup, Miracle Mile winner, over $1.9 million, nothing else to prove. He's been a remarkable horse. Favourite for a Jules, which seems an awfully long time ago when he was two. I think Ashley Loke has won the Jules back then. Um, he's just outlasted so many horses. Horses have had their entire careers start and end while Spankham was still racing, Greg. Um, wonderful horse, won a miracle mile and absolutely bolted in that night. Always found two miles at the end of his range and was beaten by Amazing Dream in an Auckland Cup and, of course, in a couple of New Zealand Cups he went down to. But yeah. wonderful horse. And if we never see him again, I hope he has a long retirement and gets very fat. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Michael. Hey, just before we get to the feature trot down at Invercargill, we have a whole lot of race markets opening up probably later this week, which we will have a look at for you next week. They include the Northern Trotting Derby, the Lone Star Sire Stakes, the Auckland Cup, the Messenger, the Fred Shaw, the National Trot, the Row Cup, the Northern Oaks, the three-year-old uh, Phillies final, the Northern Derby and the Garrard Sire Stakes final. So. Matthew Peden and his bookmaking team will be doing a massive job there putting those together and we'll have a good look at them next week. Let's go to Why Kiwi winning the David Moss at Group 3 level. Uh, sensation not long after the start, five wise men going into a gallop and he was out of play but this horse has done a great job. Nathan Williamson driving for Alistair Black beating Peregrine. Uh, Simone Lindenny and excuse my French uh, but White Kiwi is a horse on the rise. He's won six from 14 now and he did this in good style. And when you see those colours down south, Vintage Cheddar probably started it for most people. Instant respect, Michael. Yep, as a punter, most definitely, um, particularly with that driver on, although he's pretty well served, Alistair Black having both Nathan and Brad driving for him. Very low knee action, this horse. In fact, when you look at the head-on shot there, look at the other horse's knees and look at his knees. But theirs go up in the air and extend out, and his just go forward. He barely raises his knees off the ground. In fact, I haven't seen many trotters, Greg, with such a low knee carry and knee raise for a long time. So it's um, when, I, when I saw him the other day, I, have, I don't watch a lot of Southland harness racing because obviously that's other people's jobs, and I have a few other things to watch. And when I watched, I was like, wow. It's so rare the good horses have that low knee carry, so he's obviously a pretty good horse. He's in again this week, and uh, you would suggest he'll be getting a couple of trips to Addington in 2023 because he's going to win his way out of the grades down there pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely is. Uh, with Style was one of a couple of winners for Mark Purden and Hayden Cullen. Uh, beautifully handled on this occasion. A Hoka LeBron dashed to the lead here. Looked all over the winner, to, which would have completed a big day for the Dalgettys. But with Style grabs the win. Good effort. Captain Tom in the Alistair Black colours flashing home. Uh, and on the inside, Da Vinci was pretty close up too. So, uh, yeah, nice performance from With Style, who's been punching around in those very good grades. And also Duke of Scotland back in fifth position. Not the worst either. And we'll see it appear when the Christmas crackers uh, are shown to you a little bit later on. Just back to Five Wise Men too. Found to have a stone bruise, so nothing major with him. And we can expect to see him back shortly but there's Mark Purden doing what he does best getting the winners home and with style did that for the team there on Saturday. As mentioned a chance for us to have a look bit of a preview towards the New Zealand bloodstock 
uh, Yearling Sales and the Brickens team have put together a few videos for us to have a look at. Here's lot 63, a Captain T out of the brilliant race filly in Al Mac Bay Colt this one. She won the 12 races over 600,000, six times at Group 1. It's got her colour and uh, looks a pretty smart sort of an animal. So that's lot 63. Lot 78 is a Father Patrick Highgate. Wow, this is the Regal Volo family. Uh, the winner of 16 races she was, including the Vic Oaks, the Need for Speed, the Redwood Classic. Uh, the full brother, of course, is High Energy, who, uh, or full sister, rather. Um, is High Energy, who's won five from five. Another Father Patrick out of Luby Lou here. Sister to Tickle Me Pink, of course, Luby Lou. She only had a handful of starts, was uh, good enough to win the Trotting Derby. This is her second foal and her first colt and the fourth of the Bricken Farms lots. And we'll have a look at a few more of them in the new year as well. There's lot 100, which is a Captain Treacherous. Bay filly out of Only For You. She was a two-time winner, has already left, two-time Group 1 winner, has already left a Group 1 winner in a better you. And OK Boom is also out of that mare. So there's a look at some of the Brecken's draft, as you would expect, beautifully prepared. Nigel Fahey and the team doing a magic job. 36, a record for them, Michael, going to the sale. 23 Colts. Yeah, Ken and Karen have invested enormously in buying and bringing in new brew mares, like, like Ali Mack, obviously, who these horses don't come cheap. Uh, and it's paying off. So they've obviously bred and retained the Highgate type horses, but some of the other ones they've bought in, um, the, the investment's been enormous. But now they have a draft where, I looked at that last night, and I was like, wow. I bought a horse off them last year, Greg. That, that's how highly I think of what the job Nigel's doing. I think the farm's in a lot better shape than it used to be. There's just a lot of ticks here, and I think the industry should be thrilled with that level of investment because... You lose those mares offshore, you lose decades of families offshore. So well done to them. Um, they will have a super sale at Karaka in the middle of February. Yep, 19th of February for that. Now we need to cross the Tasman with Garrards. And congratulations to Angus Garrard too. Got his 500th winner and only his third full season of driving the other day. But here is Jason Grimson and Cam Hart at it again. Major Meister, bred by Tom Kilkelly, who still part owns, in front here, holding off Mac Dan and Rock and Roll Do back at the races. Huge performance from him having to come around them. They rated 56-7, and Major Meister was simply too strong. Got away in the end, home in 55.2. AG's White Sox was back in the field. He finished 11th, and the stable mate, 12th. Welcome back in to your box seat. Yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. The Weather Gods didn't play their part on Sunday at Rangiora for the Rangiora New World uh, Summer Cup, as it is. And a Get Up and Dance was the winner. First up here for Bob Butt. Uh, gets to the middle of the track. That's Franco Marek out wide, making up some good ground. Uh, Azora High was right there. Homebush Lad a little bit unlucky, just in behind them in the Hope Colours. But get up and dance was simply too good. Win six at start 18. Samstown was once again very, very good. But yeah, way too good for them. Get up and dance has already always shown that ability. Of course, won the show day futurity last year. Here's uh, Trent Yesberg grabbing his 50th win. But a couple of things to look at here, Michael. Not only was it Trent's 50th, but have a look at John Morrison here driving in the Dean Taylor colours. Unfortunately, the seat comes off. He leans down, picks it up. Carries it over the line. The horse battles on really solidly. I don't know that I've ever seen that before, Michael. Look, I know it's not funny, Greg, but it, it kind of is when people lose their seats <laughs> in the harness racing. I remember Tony Hurley, he had one happen one night at Alexander Park and it, it fell out the back and landed on the track. So it doesn't happen very often. Um, good horsemanship from John and well done to Trent. Obviously, training horses hasn't been the major part of his career. But to train 50 winners with a small team is no small deal. And, and good luck to all of our, our drivers and trainers and owners over the, the Christmas grass track circuit, Reefton, Westport, all those places, Mother Carrara. Um, it's a wonderful circuit and I hope everybody enjoys it because it, it, it really is a huge part of the industry and a huge turnover driver. So it's very important. 
Yeah, absolutely it is. And of course, Sam Thornley with his dad's horse, Madame Ruler, got his 50th driving success at the same meeting. So that was fantastic. Uh, the retirement of True Fantasy. Well, this was a brilliant performance from her, of course, winning the Neverly R final in the hands of Natalie Rasmussen. Michael, this was career win number five at Group 1 level. Uh, she just did an amazing job, won nearly $550,000, bred by Brian West, who's bought her back. Um, yeah, there was, there was nothing that you could say about her other than she was... Outstandingly fast, very good star. She won the Caduceus, the Sires at two and three, the Northern Oaks, and that Neverly R final, along with the uh, New Zealand Bloodstock Harness Million. She was selected by Jean Feast and once again produced the goods for her. And the good news is the Mears were talking about being retired on the show today, darling me and her, and as we saw earlier with the Brecon's draft, Ali Mack being retained in the country, Greg. That's crucial if you want to have important yearling sales heading forward. So well done to Brian. Uh, on retaining her and getting her back to breed from in the future, True Fantasy. Um, left a very big gap, Greg. Darling me, True Fantasy, who is going to step into open class as the mayor's open class races. It's left a real mark there at the top, and it'll be interesting to see what fillies go on to become our best mayors next season, because there have been offers for the New Zealand Oaks winner, no matter what. So you would suggest they'll get bigger. Yeah. Uh, it'd be very, very tempting to retain her in the country now, Greg, because she's running out of opposition. Yep, she certainly uh, is that. Uh, Remwick Farms have come on board with us this year. Let's have a look at uh, a selection of their draft. Here is, well, one that they will be after. Lot 199, the Better's Delight Colt out of a door to our dreams, making him a full brother to Akuta. It's a brilliant family. Uh, sister Lady Ivana has just won at Albion Park again on that Saturday night and has won five races over there. Uh, Better's Delight Fortune Lover Colt. This is the family of Vampiro who's won about 29 races and goes back to the undercover lover family too. Good looking type. Uh, lot 3 Seven six is the Better's Delight filly out of Salandra. This is a sister to Sam Hara, who's won the five races, including a sophomore. A good looking, strong filly by Betters, as you would expect. And lot 382 is a down by the seaside. I've seen him, Michael, out of Splendid Bet. This is the Chris and Me, Dream About Me family. Two foals to race, two winners of 11 races. But gee, stamps in the down by the seaside. Really strong. And um, yeah, the Renwick Farms draft, they've got 15 in. I think they've got 11 fillies. Next year they've got a whole lot more colts, but um, it's a draft that's pretty much sought after, as we saw by the first lot we showed you. Yeah, Akuta's brother is going to go for a stack of money. God, he's a, he's a unit, isn't he? he mm. He's beautiful. And good on Paul. He spent a lot of money there going to Better's Delight, which is not cheap, uh, and, and getting the results with them. You're right about down by the seaside. He reminds me a little bit of Art Major, in the fact that they're natural yearling sales horses. They stand up straight, they have presence, they have a great neck on them, a lot of crest in them. Um, lots to like about the down by the sea sides. So and now they're starting to perform on the track, Greg. So um, what I always say with sales is that if somebody said to you, a trainer or an agent, not that we have many, come look at this down by the seaside. Obviously, a better's delight, you go, yeah, I'll go look at that. And lots of other horses. But now down by the seaside's become one of those horses, Greg. Like what the hill also for Woodlands, if someone said, come look at this one, you go, okay, that, that's a starting point. And that's huge at the sales because stallions dominate sales, Greg. People yep. want things by stallions they like. And we've seen that emergence for always be Mickey now. Two years ago, nobody wanted them. And yep. now people will go look at Father them. Patrick's. Yeah, Same Father Patrick's. Exactly. They need yep. those one or two or three good horses. But down by the seaside has the advantage that his horses actually look good. Because yep. once you buy them, Greg, as you know from Karen, you got to look at them every day. Yeah. Well, yep. I don't. I don't, but you do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that, Michael. You yeah. know this. Right, we need to move on to a bit of preview now. And uh, Ash Burton, they race, of course, uh, on uh, Thursday. And uh, this is uh, Cloudy Bay. Getting through on the inside. A couple of smarties uh, in front of him. Heisenberg being one and Terry the other. But Cloudy Bay, she's not only nominated. She's got Carter Delgetti doing the driving uh, on at Ash Burton. Uh, but it's nominated for the Westport Cup as well and wouldn't need to produce much more or a better performance than this, Michael, to be winning the sixth there. This could be the horse 
that wins Team Tell for the Premiership, both Ashburton and at Westbourne. Now here's a horse you like, in fact you love this horse, and you've been tipping it and it hasn't let you down much. He's a good horse, Sonny Louie. He went round to the derby last time, didn't get it right in that. This is him winning on show day. Gee, he'll be hard to beat, I think, in the ninth. The Bill Doyle Memorial Handicap does have to come off the 10 metres, but Sam Thornley, he's got a big rap on this horse too. He's by Royal Aspirations. He's a beautiful mover, and I reckon he'll take all sorts of beating there. Uh, just on some of the TAB odds too, spoke to Matthew Peden. He said Winton and Cambridge, the Christmas Eve meeting, will be out Friday morning and Westport will be out uh, on Friday afternoon. So bear that in mind. Continuing with our preview, let's go to Addington for uh, Friday night. Here's Midnight Dash. He got the job done off the 40 metres, Michael. This took some uh, took some doing. He beats a smallish field. I dream about Jeannie there in second. Um, but he was very, very good, and he should be hard to beat, you would think, in free, under free-for-all conditions this week. Yep, up against Oscar Bonavina, and he's off to Australia Midnight Dash. He's going to go and accompany Muscle Mountain to the Great Southern Star. That's the first weekend in February, and he will stay on there. And with the trotting ranks in Australia not being overly strong, He'll be too good for most of them most weeks. Yeah, he will be. Matadero's in that race as well as N. Hine, the dominator and the like. Uh, here's better be sharp in the Gerard O'Reilly colours. Gets beaten, Michael, but there was a lot to like about this performance. Not by much. Mason Shard there in third. Uh, and the horse that actually won that race is Jeff Dunn's uh, horse to follow. So um, I think that's a big tip. South Seas Rock it was. Uh, in the right box. Um, the other thing about this race, Michael, I like it, I know you don't, but it's the one time a year they have a 2,400 metre stand. You know Jared O'Reilly's horses invariably step. It's drawn one. That's why I wanted to show you that. I, I think it'll take some catching from that position. It drew barrier nine over the mobile that time. Well, Greg, they don't put the races on to make me happy. And <laughs> the bottom line is, doesn't matter where they run them, over what distance, they'll still be a winner. Yes, I won't be having a bet, but... I think that's a pretty good case for lots of other people to be. <laughs> Cambridge, let's go there uh, for their traditional Christmas Eve uh, meeting. And this is a horse you do know, Michael. You dipped it out, got the business done on this occasion. Village Rebel was uh, his name. Salish Abernathy driving for Nicky Chilcott. Uh, this is racing in the Garrard's Horse and Hound Christmas Cup this week. Has to start off a mark of 10 metres, but I don't think it'll matter the way it went here. I think it's the best horse Nicky's ever trained. Wow. She's, she's had an Easter Cup winner in Disprove, yep. and she's had Gold, who was a very good trotter. I think this is, potentially, it still has to do the job. It's an open class horse, and it's incredibly hard for a small stable to get an open class horse these days. I think it can turn up an open class, and it's, I'm not saying it's going to win a New Zealand Cup, but I think it'll get there, which is incredibly hard to do. It's harder to do now than it was in the Disprove days. Uh, this is a good horse. Yep, well, if you go back, go to HRNZ and go back and have a look at its last performance in its entirety. Gee, it was a good staying performance and it went up to win and then just ran away and hid. So Michael might be right. Just the nine starts, four wins and goes round in the Garrard's Horse and Hound at Christmas Cup. Race number nine at 11 minutes to six on Christmas Eve. Of course, Winton racing there too. Uh, the Westport fields aren't out as we record this, but there are only about seven or eight nominations uh, for the $20,000 Westport Cup. Amongst them, Homebush Lad, who we did show earlier, uh, you would think would be pretty hard to beat in that. And as Michael said, to all of those racing over the Christmas period, the Westports, Reefton's, Omakau's, uh, Mata Carrara's, Winton's, all of those places. We wish you all the very best with your meetings and hope the weather plays its part and the crowds do turn up. Short break for us. On the other side, we've got an extended Christmas cracker list for you. Yes, many winners coming up when we come back. You're in your home straight, in your box seat on our Christmas edition. Michael Guerin, big news coming out this week from Cambridge. So we go back to the race by Grins. It's now a million dollars. Isn't it great? Um, this thing didn't exist this time last year. It was in its infancy, but no one was sure it was going to get off the ground. So to, to the club there, to the Waikato Te Amutu, uh, club, first of all, well done. 
um, to David Branch, who's been an enormous driver of this. And it's no small deal. I've spoken to him many times, Greg, and this is losing sleep type stuff because you're swimming against the tide at the moment or the headwinds, as everybody keeps saying to me. And if I don't say the word headwinds in 2023, I'll be a significantly happier person. It's a bloody big deal. He said to people, look, we're going to get this to a million in the second year. They're going to do that. There's going to be a sweepstake. And, and I, I implore people to get involved if you've got the money. I'm not saying everybody's got the money. Is this like the Kosciuszko type? Uh, yeah, basically, yes. What they're going to yep. do, roughly, is have 2,000 tickets at $100 each. And I realise not everybody has $100. Yep. But if you see yourself as, as a supporter of harness racing, if you buy a $100 ticket, then 200,000 goes into the pool. 100,000 of that goes back to the people who buy the tickets. Yep. So whoever draws the horse who eventually wins the race by grins gets 50K. That's a lot of money. So look, if you've got it, or if you haven't got that sort of money and, and you've got 10 mates at the pub and you want to put in $10 each, yep. you can buy a ticket and, and then have a horse racing for 50 grand for you, which would be really cool. So that's going to be one way of topping up the shortfall. Um, Harness Racing New Zealand's given them $20,000 for every other race that night. So they're going to have a nine race program. This is April the 14th, same day as last year, date, different day. It's on a Friday and it's not Easter weekend, so we can have more fun. So nine race card at the stage. And they couldn't get the slot trot off the ground because, as David said, we were committed to taking the other race to a million, yep. which they've done, so they have kept their word. And with the slot trot, it was going to be too hard to do the two things with the TAB funding shortfall. Not blaming anybody for that. That's just the reality. Just how it is. So they're hoping to do that in 2024. Now, what they are hoping to do, and Harness Racing New Zealand should absolutely get behind this, is move the flying trot, whether it's a mile or 1700, to that night. Because then you might, might get Muscle Mountain and Sunday Sun. It won't be 500k for the trot slot race, but they'll still have massive exposure on a night where you're going to have a great field, a great, great pacing field. You have that, Greg. What I would do to, I said to David, I said, just put whatever you want on. I think the Waikato Guineas has been largely a race which has got lost. Bring that in. You know, let's work with this club. Let Harness Race in New Zealand. Forget about programs and all that nonsense because a lot of them don't mean anything and a lot of our races don't get off the ground anyway. Just stack it because heading forward, there's only going to be two or three race meetings in this country that the gallops people go to, Greg. Invercargill the other day might become one. Maybe the Grand Prix, hopefully. New Zealand Cup Day, obviously. And the race by Grins. Now, I know that because I talk to these people every day. They don't want to go to the normal harness racing meeting, and most of our harness racing people don't want to go to a normal gallops meeting. They're too busy. But the race by Grins is top-end stuff. And if you can stack that card and, and have really good support races, then you have something we can sell to the public. There's no doubts in my mind, Greg, as somebody who does this on both sides of the Tasman, both codes, you can sell the big events. Even if they're not that big. In Bacargo last week, you can sell that to people and tell them it's important. It's really hard to sell the Great Northern Oaks just sitting by itself on a card at Alexandra Park. The people I deal with are not going to say, hey, it's Great Northern Oaks night. Do you want to go to the park? No, I don't care. And that's most harness races. In fact, it's most gallops races. But when you have those big chunky cards with three or four or five races and the tab gets behind them and say, we'll put a terminating pick six on this, then you can sell that to people, Greg. So let's move everything. Let's, let's move all the furniture. No one cares when the Waikato Guineas is as long as it's on a good night because if it's on a normal Friday night or this Saturday, no one's going to pay attention. No. Let's stack the card, make it cool because we have a million dollar harness race. And at the moment, Greg, I think there's a real lack of enthusiasm in lots of ways in harness racing. People are tired. Yep. They're scared of the funding shortfall for the TAB. It bothers people. And it's been a bloody long season and a confusing season because it's a due season. And you need things to look forward to. And, and the thing we always look forward to is New Zealand Cup Week. But we can replicate that in the north a little bit with this. And it can... I believe very quickly become our second biggest harness racing meeting and that's no disrespect to the Grand Prix but the Grand Prix is suffering from racing fatigue coming off the back of Cup Week there's All no right. doubts about that if, if you had the choice right now and you had a slot who would you take 
If it's all at the same price, which I, I think is 50-50, most of the deals, I would take copy that because the race is in New Zealand. Uh, and he's got more gate speed than self-assured and more gate speed than rock and roll do. If you add them to a Kuta, Old Town Road will get a slot. That is going to happen. I think BDJ will get a slot. And I think Majestic Cruises team might be willing to come back, Greg. That alone is an awfully tasty race. Let's get right behind this. Let's not put any impediments, any judder bars in its way. And let's support a young administrator like David Branch before you lose them to the gallops, which is what's going to happen unless we support these sort of things and these sort of initiatives. Yep. Well, he's the horse to beat at the moment. Copy that. That is for sure. What about some of the horses to beat over the Christmas period? We've canvassed our team. Here's the North Island uh, team and Anna Donnelly's at the top. Perfect bet actually starts uh, at Cambridge this week and it'll be at nice each way price. Uh, Jack the Builder even got the date from John Dickey. James Stormont likes special effects. Tony Hurler, he blame it on the night. Todd Mitchell gave me a horse that I'd sent up to him that hasn't even been to the workout yet, Michael, but that's not surprising. President Flinton and Robert Dunn, he's gone with Bark. Here's the South Island team and look, Bob Butts won. Brando is going to be hotly sought after because Bob's had a massive Massive 2022. Captain Tom's a good horse. He's heading to Omacow. Um, yeah, lots to like here. First class is a double up. So Robbie Close and Regan Todd, the team there, doubling up with the Roxborough Stars Cup. For... This week, Michael, first class. Yep, former All-Stars horse and former one-time favourite for the Northern three-year-old stakes. Um, yeah, lots of information here. Greg, who gave you the biggest push? Who was the person who you thought when they text back, oh, OK, well, yeah, let's start with Ben Hope. He's going that good, he gave us two. Michael Kane at Nelson and Blue Rock Dancer at Monte Carrara, so that impressed me. Probably Lumen Shaley there for Mark Purden, when you think of the, the horses that they could choose from, not that they've got a huge team racing at the moment. And uh, our Golden Kenny, I thought uh, Phil Williamson was good. We've even got a couple from Australia, Michael. Angus Garrard, I mentioned earlier on, and Jack Trainer. Uh, Stingray Tara racing at Bathurst, he said, uh, I think it's on New Year's Eve. So, um, yep, Matthew Cross has come up with one too. Incredible Mickey. And, of course, Craig Thornley there, Franco Norton. When you think about uh, the team that they invariably go south with, the Spray and Lodge team of Sticks McRae, yeah, I think you should always respect those, Michael. But a big thank you to our participants throughout the year. Uh, this show is your show, and without their input, Michael, It'll be you and I talking a whole lot of rubbish and not a lot of people watching. So um, a big ups to them and a big thank you for them providing us with those winners for this this year. Yeah, we're very lucky to have this access to people or, or busy on race nights because obviously galloping trainers have time on race day because they don't ride the horses. Whereas those interviews the other day, you know, John Dunn is jumping in and out of the sulky behind other horses. So we're very lucky with the access we get. It's going to be an exciting 2023, Greg. There's a lot of exciting things happening and slot races and all sorts of things going on and changes. So it's going to be a time of change. Um, the Premiership, we have 10 days to go. Team Telfer, are they going to win it? Uh, the way it's going, and, and numerically you think they're going to. I think Mark and Hayden can win a couple of races, but I, I do think Steve and Amanda will win maybe three, four or five, and that, that will probably be, be the difference uh, in the end. Uh, while we're doing a few thank yous, got to thank the TAB as well. They provide us with the studio, they give us some staff that help us out throughout the year, Mark Wilsner, Brittany. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic that they do that for us, and without that, we wouldn't be able to produce the show that we do. Also get Cameron Shaw to produce the map each and every week, and uh, he does this for us. And here's the map for this week. 10 races Thursday, Ashburton, latest start there, 3.13. Uh, looking forward to their program. It was the old Boxing Day, but it's still got a very good program there on Thursday. Addington have 10 races on Friday, 5.14, the first of those. Winton race on Saturday. They've got the nine races. Eight minutes past 12 is the start time there. And, of course, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Harness Racing Club have the $20,000 Garrard's Horse and Hound Cambridge Christmas Cup. They had a Trotters Cup too, but they didn't get enough starters for that. 10 races there just after 2 o'clock. The Westport Cup on Boxing Day in its traditional slot, uh, 10 past 12, the start time there for their first Gore race the next day. They got the 12 races, 12.29, including the Gore Pacing Cup with the Matara Licensing Trust and the Kim McDowell Gore Trotting Cup 
as well. And uh, then we'll be back at Westport for their second day, the Caltex Cup for 18,000, their feature 11.45 for them. Uh, on the 29th, of course, it's Mota Carrara. On the 30th, it's Reefton, and then it's the ATC on the 31st. Our best bets of the week. We've had a bit of a lull the last few weeks, so we need to turn that around with hand milking. Selections this week. Michael, you've gone with Cloudy Bay at Ashburton, so we get into it nice and early, and I've gone with uh, Sonny Louie. So this week, our man who would normally give us his selections, Graham Hand, has had a bigger week than he was expecting. They've been working for about 10 years, he and his wife Kaylee, to try and have a child. Inda Grace Hand was born a couple of days ago, so he is otherwise uh, indisposed, Michael, and unavailable to find some selections, but on behalf of the box seat team, Graham's a, a big investor in the game. He has horses uh, with the likes of Regan Todd, most of his horses, and yeah, he, he's been a bit busy to find us a winner, but um, yeah, he's told us to double up on our selection, so no pressure. I think Mrs. Hand's been a lot busier than he is. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, Ender, welcome to the world. I hope you enjoy it. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful, Greg, to see that um, new life. It's been a tough week in racing for, for everybody in New Zealand racing. We know what happened last week at Ashburton. So one thing I want to say, Greg, New Year's, Christmas, busy time on the roads. Be safe. Don't rush to overtake. I know it's hard to believe coming from me, from a guy who likes to drive fast. But... Get to the races safe, get round safe and get home safe. And if that happens, Greg, I really don't care who wins the races between now and January the 2nd. No, Michael, and next week we'll have our final show for 2022. It will effectively be a preview show for the Alexandra Park meeting uh, on the 31st. We'll cover off Monte Carrara and the like and, um, yeah, have a look at some of those markets. Because like you say, when, you, when, you, when I reeled off all those markets before that the tab are going to be opening, gee, there's some opportunities coming up in the, the latter part of the summer and, and into the autumn as well. So we'll have a look at those and see if we can't dissect them, Michael, and find some value for the punters to uh, get things off on the right note in 2023. But it's been fantastic to have you part of the show. We've had Matthew Cross uh, doing the business as well. I forgot to meet Daryl, who's on sound before. He was in my ear saying, you never mentioned me. No, he wasn't. Um, but it was nice to give him a mention as well. But uh, to you, Michael, to you and the family, to Amanda, wish you uh, a very Merry Christmas. And, yeah, thanks for everything, mate, because it's, uh, it's much appreciated. You too, brother. Merry Christmas to all our participants out there. Good luck to all the punters. And, yeah, we'll keep trucking on. We've got racing here next week. We'll try and find you a winner. So we're looking forward to it. But, yeah, between now and then, everybody have a great Christmas. All right, we'll see you in a week. The Box Seat brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Harness Link for your worldwide harness coverage. New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread, where winning begins. Brecon Farms, Stonewall Stud, IRT at your horse and our passion, Australasian wide Garrard's Horse and Hound, Renwick Farms, Lincoln Farms, Harness Racing New Zealand, and the clubs Addington Ashburton, Alexandra Park, and Cambridge.